evening troops. So welcome to the Black Dog Running Club on YouTube. This is, uh, if, you're, if you're already a subscriber and you follow my channel, uh, you'll already know what this is about. But if you're just scrolling through um, and wondering if you're gonna stay for more than 10 seconds, uh, we'd love to have you, welcome aboard. Uh, but if you don't like what you see, then, you know, have a happy life, scroll on. But I'm hoping you like, like it. It's quite, I like to keep this honest, transparent. Um, if I ever um, look at any products or things that I use that maybe I'm, I'm sponsored by anyone, then I'll always let you know, I'm always completely transparent. Um, but we look, I, I, I do various kit uh, reviews. I, we're trying to promote, create a community here. So I, we, we look at mental health awareness. We look at global running adventures. I'm very lucky to travel the world, taking on some iconic uh, and famous races. Um, I delve into, explore a little bit about mindset and resilience, um, in part, sort of what I know and what I've learned. Um, and I also give you the odd um, insight from the operational front line for those that are interested in that sort of thing. Um, so you can just pick whichever videos kind of suit your preference. Now, in terms of uh, what we're looking at today, I'm doing a little bit of a kit review now. Disclaimer, uh, obviously I'm not a professional athlete, but if you follow my channel, you'll know that I've been all over the world, as I say, and I've done some um, pretty well-known races. I've been very, very lucky, very fortunate to have done that. Um, so I do have quite a bit of experience, but again, I'm not a professional athlete, so you don't have to listen to me. I'm also not a medical practitioner or a, a podiatrist or anything like that. So. Any, any reviews, what you got to remember, whatever you watch on YouTube about kit reviews, equipment reviews, and, I, and I'm one of these people that go looking for these sorts of things, and when I was starting out and learning about ultra running and endurance challenges, I was hungry for information as well. It's only natural. So by all means, go and look for some advice and some guidance and some reviews on equipment and, and, and kit that's used by other people. But whenever anyone says this is the best of anything, it's the best for, for them, perhaps, or maybe they're sponsored by that person or whatever. So I'm going to talk to you today about my best shoes, my best, I'm going to look at some trail and road shoes that work for me. And that's, that's the thing to remember. It's a very uh, personal decision. What works for me may not necessarily work for someone else. And sometimes, unfortunately, it's only trial and error that you find these things out. But, you know, Knowing by doing a bit of research, you can make a more more of an informed decision. So anyone that tells you this is the best thing for you, that may not necessarily be the case. Remember, it's very, very individual and we're all unique and that's what makes us all different. And, and therefore, you know, we all have different feet. But I do have some advice from years of mistakes as well. That's that's the important thing to remember. I've made years of mistakes and that and that can be very costly. And it's also cause a lot of injuries in the past. So stick around, let's see. So I'm gonna to talk to you about, firstly, um, I was quite an avid user in the early days. Let me just reach down here. Uh, I was a, a user of Innovate. I, was, I, I used these for some of my early ultras. Um, now, for anyone that knows Innovates, you'll know that these come run quite narrow or well, that's certainly my experience. I now know, years and years later, that I have a wide foot. Hence why I was picking up lots of injuries um, because my shoes just didn't, my shoes didn't fit. Um, I also, these days, run in quite uh, cushioned shoes, whereas you'll know if you've used Innovates, uh, they're not known for their maximal cushioning either. So they're, they're on the thinner sold side, I would say. Um, that being said, this, this is an older shoe now. This is the X-Talon 190, and this got me uh, around 107 miles in this, um, out of the block, um, hadn't even worn it in, which never, never do. <laughs> Don't make the same mistakes as me. You should always wear your shoes in, obviously. Uh, but when I was younger, more inexperienced, a bit more gung-ho, that's the sort of thing I did. Um, and usually that would be a terrible mistake, but actually I got through the race all right with no blisters. Um, 
and I really like these. Um, and, I'll, and I'll come back to these because I'm looking at going, after these shoes, I moved on to shoes that are known for more cushioning, but I'm looking actually uh, at going back to some more um, shoes that follow the, 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 the natural shape of the shoe. And anyone that's read uh, Chris, Chris, uh, McDougall book, Born to Run, which is the, the iconic famous book, or if anyone that follows Shane Benzi, The Art of Running, you know, and they look at the biomechanics of the foot and how we were, you know, we were, we've naturally evolved over time, but we, we would, you know, when we were hunter gatherers, we would run barefoot after our food and things like that. Um, and so there is two schools of thought out there. There's one that, you know, shoes should be more in shape with, with, with your natural shape of your foot. So, you, you know, we're not, um, you're not supporting the arch and things like that to keep a much more natural gait and a much more natural stance when we're running. But then there is another school of thought that we should be protecting the foot and it should be maximal cushioning. So, you know, on races, you'll often see either maximal cushioning, great big stacks, uh, big old heel drops, heel to toe drops, or you'll see some quite flat shoes. And uh, with a, sometimes with a zero drop, um, like your ultras and things like that, um, which actually I'm, I'm looking to, to trial. So I'll let you know how that goes in a separate video. But anyway, moving on, stepping outside a shot to get some more um, shoes. And if you recognize this, you'll recognize the, uh, where I am tonight. I'm, I'm in my, uh, my home gym, the pain cave, and there's a separate video on that. So, so have a look for that. Uh, if you haven't already, there's lots of good tips about setting up your own home gym. You know, all the things that your, your wife won't allow you to have in the house. So here we have the Challenger ATR. Now this is by Hoka, Hoka One One, to say its proper name. So you'll notice that a lot of my shoes are filthy because I haven't cleaned them. Um, so I'm keeping it real. And it goes to show that I have actually used all of these shoes. Um, as I said, I'm not sponsored by anyone, any one of these brands I'm, I'm, I'm talking about in this video. So I, you'll, you may have noticed that this uh, strip of Velcro, this, this is tailored on. Uh, this was prior to the Marathon de Saab because that's where your sand gaiters attached to. You have some gaiters with some matching Velcro on and you have to get the strip of Velcro um, tailored, onto, sewn onto your shoe, sewn and glued. Uh, and then your gaiters are fixed to that and it just keeps out some of the sand if you've but i've done quite a few videos on the mds for anyone that's interested in, in, in going out there doing that now the reason i chose this shoe was because it's a bit of a crossover between you know, i was looking for more bang for my buck um and i do road and trail i don't i you know i don't exclusively do one or the other so um and i enjoy both terrains so the ATR, this was this was the Hoka ATR, Hoka Challenger ATR5. There's a, you know, it's moved on in iterations now in different models. But the ATR stands for all terrain. So this was meant to be a bit of a, a hybrid between uh, your, your road and trail shoe. Um, so I wanted to try that and I have run across the Sahara in this and it served me served me well. But here's golden tip number one. Save yourself some pain and get your feet measured early on. You can go to most running shoe shoe, uh, shoe shops nowadays, and, and, and you know a proper one will have, especially a shoe shop will have uh, a treadmill in there, and they and they can film you whilst you run on a treadmill, and they can analyse your gait. So not only can they tell you you know how you run, what what your gait looks like. So are are you overpronating, you know, or, or supinating or, or whatever. Um, and they can tell whether you're a heel striker, toe striker, etc., cetera, etc., cetera, uh, whether your, your foot's rolling inwards or outwards. Um, but they should also measure your foot at the same time. Now, it was a long time into my running journey, many years before I got my foot actually properly measured. Um, and in fact, it was the first, before the first time I went out to the desert for the MDS. And I discovered that I had a, quite an exceptionally wide foot. Now, there are there are shoes on the market for wide-footed people and and that is what i exclusively buy now um, and i get m much less problems now than the earlier days when clearly all of my shoes were real fitting um so this was my first wide one of my first wide shoes that i bought 
Um, and what you're looking for if you have got a wide foot is an E after the sizing. So this is a this is a two E, but you can get a four E, which is extra wide, and I and I've got some versions of that. So this was a two E. Now, as I say, this this shoe got me round, but I was quite disappointed. And this is how you're going to be able to tell I'm not sponsored by Hoka, uh, because I had three uh, pairs of this exact model, and all three. Uh, tour um, between the sole and, and the upper um, uh, and I personally felt that that was a, de a design fault with this with this model um, Hoka to be fair after a little bit of argument did send me uh, a new issue to pop out a shot again um, and they sent me the newer version so this was the ATR 6 much cleaner because I've used it much less um, Again, a solid shoe, and I've put a few miles on this, but I hadn't put hundreds of miles like I did on the other one. Um, and so, so, so far this has held up, but I, to be perfectly honest, I lost, I lost confidence in, in Hoka after that experience. I had three pairs split in exactly the same area. Um, and so I started to move away from Hoka, but I have many friends, many running partners that still run in Hoka, absolutely love it. Um, you know they've got some really popular models like the speed goat um and actually that's a that's a model i, I want to trial before i completely move away from hoka i want to give them one more try one more chance um so sticking with the with the trail shoes for now um the one big game changer for me um between my first mds and the second was i moved away from hoka as i said because of the problems i experienced and i and i moved to brooks and this is a very muddy, I'm sorry to say, a uh, bit shameful. Look after your shoes. That's one of the reasons why they might split. If you don't look after your shoes, don't stick them in the washing machine because you can you can damage the, the, the fabric. You can um, dissolve some of the glues and solvents that they use in the shoes. So don't put it in the washing machine, but give them a good scrub after a dirty run on the trails. Um, look after your shoes and hopefully they'll look after you for much longer. Um, so these were the Brooks Cascadia, um, and this was the Brooks Cascadia 16. And again, I got this in a 2E. Um, so unfortunately, it's a bit like being a vegetarian. Um, there's much less on the menu, if you like. So when you go looking for wide shoes, I'm, I now have much uh, lesser choices than someone with a, with a normal sized uh, footwood. But... For me, I know a wider shoe is going to bring me less injury, less trouble, less pain when I'm running. So it's a much more pleasurable experience. So um, I stick with the wide shoes. Um, I could probably get away in some shorter races, but uh, with a normal fitting shoe. But a wide shoe for me, you know, when I'm covering lots and lots of miles, makes a much more sensible choice. So uh, Brooks Cascadia, absolute, I have to say, absolute game changer from my first MDS to the second. And I, after that, I was a, I was a complete Brooks convert. Um, and Brooks is a, you know, a, his, uh, a, a, a brand with a lot of history, very, very popular. And the Cascadia is one of the all time best sellers from Brooks and, and, and of all brands and, and, and models. Brooks Cascadia has been really, really popular. However, they only did one uh, of the Cascadia models in wide. And unfortunately, when it came time to replace these, and I, it was a long, long time before I did because I, it seemed like the whole of the UK ran out of wide fit shoes in, in, the, in the Cascadia model. I searched high and low, couldn't get them for love nor money. Wish I'd known that there would have been a shortage at the time of, 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 of getting these because I probably would have got three or four pairs. I, I loved them. Um, so as a result, again, don't do what I do, but I wasn't willing, I couldn't find any wide fit Cascadias in the country when I needed a new pair, when it was time to change these up because these uh, were, were quite quite beyond their shelf, shelf life. So um, I stuck with them and I actually ran 120 kilometers around the Azores knowing that I had a ripped, uh, a ripped sole again, the you know they won't last forever no shoe will when you really you know you're battering them so the 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 sole ripped away from the from the upper i needed a new set um 
Again, you can see the Velcro around these ones that I had uh, stitched on and tailored uh, for the MDS specifically. Um, so I even ran round the Azores, did a 120 kilometer ultra around the Azores, um, with knowing that I had uh, a tear and I in these and wasn't sure if I if I'd even finish. Um, so it was a risk. It was a risk. Um, I took a roll of duct tape in case my soles fell off as a last resort. Um, but you know that's you know part of my public speaking. I you know when I talk about sort of um, you know some of the, some of the challenges. You, you you know what's your plan B going to be? What if everything goes wrong? You know it, at the end of the day, it's you that runs the race, not the shoe. So uh, you you learn to be adaptable. You learn to be resilient. And that's all part of the mindset. Um, however, they did hold out on me. I got home uh, and then I said, right, that's it. Never doing that again. Uh, I need to get a new new pair. And again, UK just could not get any. So stupidly, I went and did another race, the X Energy, one of the X Energy Ultras. Um, uh, I think that was 29 miles. And again, I managed to just about scrape home with the, the soles still holding on. But then it was time, it really was, they'd had their best days. So I just lean out and shot again. And I had to go to the US. I had to get a pair from the US. Uh, again, I couldn't even move up to the new version because there was none in the UK. So I went with a Brooks Cascadia 16 again. Um, in a wide fit, but I had to get it from shipped from the US. And, and, and I'm currently still using these. So these are getting pretty battered now, but you know, they, like I say, these, these Cascadia 16s were an absolute game changer for me. And I am, um, I'm a big advocate of them. Like I said, I am gonna try some ultras and some zero drop shoes for something different. But for me, these have been uh, a, a lovely shoe. I've got a lot of time for the Brooks Cascadia and the Brooks brand in, in general. As you will see, so I'm moving on to some road shoes that I use now. And again, remember, these are these are the choices that I make. You don't have to make the same ones. Brooks Ghost, okay? These are the Brooks Ghost 13. And you can see how worn these are that I have been wearing these. I've got, I've got some real good use out of these. I loved these really, really, cushioned, really plush, um, no injuries in these, really, really liked them. I've done um, quite a few marathons in these. Uh, and again, I got a lot of time for the Brooks Ghost. And, and again, I got these in a, these were a 4E in fact. So I've my, my trail shoes were a 2E, which is a wide fit. And my road shoes, I went for a 4E. Now the reason why that is, is not that my foot gets any bigger on the road, uh, as opposed to the trail, but for the trail, I just wanted to lock my foot in that little bit more snugly because the terrain can be doing a bit of that and keeping your ankles and your toes guessing. So it's just to keep my foot a little bit more secure. I didn't go too wide, but on the road, I thought I'd give myself a little bit more luxury, a little bit more leeway and movement for my toes to splay out on the road surface, the flat surface. Um, so I went with the 4 um, and, and that is extra wide. Now, as I say, I moved on then, because I love those so much, coming back into shot, sorry. I'm now on, I've, I've, I've trusted them and I've stayed with them on, I'm, I'm on the Brooks Ghost 14 and there's a new iteration already. So I will probably, when these wear out, I will probably move on to the next version. Uh, Cause right now I've got no reason to move away from them. I've got a lot of time for them. They've served me really well. Um, so I'm going to stick with them. So yeah, one of my recommendations. Now, moving back to the, as we were talking about before, you can see from that. Now, when we talk about, when we talk about shoes, when you're looking for your shoes, you know, you'll, they'll be lined up on, on the internet or in the shop as, uh, first of all, make sure you're looking at whether you're looking at trail or road shoes, know which one you're going for, or whether you're going for some sort of a hybrid. It very much depends on how much you race, how seriously you take it. Um, you know, you don't need to be spending a fortune. Um, and if you have read, you know, the Born to Run book, you'll, you'll know what I'm talking about there. Um, it is very much the person and not the shoe, but we all love a bit of kit, don't we? Now you can tell 
just if I use a clean hoker here, if you look at what they call the stack height, okay, so I, I forget what the drop is on these, but it's quite a significant heel to toe drop, okay? So look at the chunkiness of the heel, very, very cushioned, okay? Now in comparison, if we go to a more of a flat, obviously I've worn these quite badly, but look at that in comparison. If I hold them both up, there is no comparison. There's hardly any heel to, to toe drop. These are almost a flat shoe. Um, now, there's a lot, but like I said, there's, there's two schools of thought on this. It depends which way you want to go. Um, I, because of an injury I picked up recently, um, and that isn't because of the shoes, that's just because of, it's an overuse injury. Um, but I've got, I haven't got another video on, on injury, which if you want to see that, um, and what I've done about that, because I've, I've been like a bear with a sore head with that injury. Um, I thought I would just trial something else, you know. Um, so I'm going to try and go back to, not barefoot running. I've never been a, an advocate of barefoot running, but I'm gonna go for much less cushioning on my left shoe and see how I get on, see if that helps the biomechanics of, of, my, of my, my feet and, and my gait and, and, and just give that a go. And if it doesn't work, then I'll, you know, I'll head back to my tried and tested, which I've been using for years. And it's not something you should do overnight anyway. It's something that you should build up to. You shouldn't, you know, you shouldn't go from a, a maximal cushion height shoe to, to, to something with a very much more of a zero drop. Um, but anyway, as I said, these are just some of my favorites that I use. They work for me, they may not work for you. Um, but I'm just going on, on my experience, my preferences. Um, try them for yourself, but these will come with thumbs up for me, but some have worked better than others. Um, have fun out there, be safe, uh, and, and, and do, do you for you, okay? Be unique. Thanks guys, thanks for watching. Please subscribe um, and, and hit the bell if you like what you see and you'll get notified of the next videos. Thanks guys.